Okay, I'm just going to talk about a couple of the benefits of ethical action behavior. Um, some of the ones that may not be so apparent. One we, talk, one we talked about briefly, just to mention it again, that when we cultivate ethics as a practice, the mind becomes increasingly settled, calm, and clear. Okay? There's no longer the same agitation, guilt, worry, fear about being found out, regrets, etc., that agitate, disturb, and cloud the mind. Okay? These are some of the reasons why ethics is such a, a crucial foundational practice in every spiritual tradition. Okay? <clears throat> Another benefit is that it gives confidence and power. There's an interesting experience that comes as you work with ethics and clean up your act you become increasingly confident and get a sense of power because you know that people can't call you on stuff. There are a number of reasons. There are, there are various reasons this works, but <clears throat> one of them is that you know you're not going to be called out by people for being unethical. And this results in not only personal power, but an interpersonal power. One of the things that ethics allows you to do is to, with integrity, call out other people when they're not being unethical, when they're not being ethical. Because as long as you're being unethical yourself, you can't afford to call other people. Okay? And basically the game we get into is I won't call you if you don't call me. Okay? And a lot of relationships are based on this covert collusion. Okay? It's just the kind of subtle norm. We don't call one another. Well, let me suggest, and I will come to this in the practices, if you really want to, want to mature and grow, one of the things you do is you set up relationships and communities in which you agree to call each other. Okay? But one of the benefits of ethical ethical living, is that it really does give you greater personal and interpersonal power. And, importantly, it makes you happy. Here's a quote from the Buddha. Speak and act with a pure mind, and happiness will follow you as your shadow, unshakable. Set your heart on doing good, do it over and over again, and you'll be filled with joy. One of the reasons this is so is because of another principle by which the mind works, and it's a really important one. What you intend for another, you tend to experience yourself. Okay? What you intend someone else to experience you tend to experience yourself, okay? There are whole spiritual practices based on that assumption. One of the ways you cultivate, for example, love or compassion is you wish well for others. You just wish them well and you tend to, or you wish love for someone and what happens? You feel loving yourself. <clears throat> and I can tell you, I, there are practices and, I'd have to say the most ecstatic month of my life ever occurred in a little cell I could reach out and touch the walls where I spent a month doing a practice from the moment I woke up to the moment I fell asleep reciting the phrase, may you be happy, joyous, loving, peaceful. It was a classic practice for cultivating love. And do that every moment throughout a day and then for 30 days, I mean, it's extraordinary. So, these, are, these can be very powerful. <clears throat> okay, now, of course, ethics is also for other people. It makes us safe. And as we were talking about before, if you want people to grow and be happy and healthy and mature, make it safe for them. Ethics allows that. Now, 
there's a caveat here. Ethics is founded on this intention for the well-being of everyone, including ourself. However, something often gets in the way. Reality. <laughs> you know, things happen. And being human, our existential condition is such that we have no control at, a, at an absolute level over outcome. We can intend the best. And what happens is, to a large extent, out of our control. Okay. This is why at deep levels, ethical practice is best combined with a kind of karma yoga. Now, what's the essence of karma yoga? Well, there's another whole discussion, <coughs> but the essence is three things. Before beginning any activity, you offer it to God or to a higher value. <coughs> Second, you follow through as impeccably as you can. And third, and this is what makes it such a knife edge of a practice, you let go attachment to the outcome. Okay. So to work ethics as a sophisticated, effective practice, it is best combined with karma yoga. That is, we, act, we intend, we attempt to act as ethically and as, as impeccably as we can while simultaneously letting go attachment to the outcome. I'll let you into a secret. It's easier said than done. <laughs> All of this, unfortunately, is easier said than done. If it wasn't, we wouldn't need to be here. So, so okay, so all of this is the framework which is essential for understand for a a contemplative understanding of ethics, of how it works, of why it works, it's why it's so important, and for making sense of the practices that are, are essential for cultivating it.